so much for the opportunity that we all have to come together and discuss very weighty matters and to have a fellowship in you, Lord, to be brothers and sisters in Christ, to be a real family uh, full of love and care for one another. And Lord, that we can come together and, and bear one another's burdens and to love one another and encourage one another. So this morning, Lord, I ask that you would help us to meditate on your truth and to uh, escape the things that hold us back, as uh, Pastor Bukema was saying today, uh, to walk on two legs and to not uh, neglect one or the other, but to work on what we do and work also on what we believe. And uh, Lord, help us to excel at these things. Be with us now. Speak your truth. I do not want to speak lies, Lord. I don't want to speak lies. I don't want to believe lies. And I don't want anybody here to do the same. So uh, if there's anything that's wrong, Lord, with what we're saying, please correct us. And uh, Lord, we ask your help at this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we will be discussing today, why should I, and that I is any of you, and myself, myself included, why should I care about my life in Christ? Uh, this is not my normal kind of class or normal kind of lesson, actually. I, I kind of felt like a mad scientist as I put together this presentation, which I put the finishing touches on just before we left the house. And I laughed, I think, a mad laugh. You were loading the kids. I cackled. <laughs> At any rate, there's going to be probably some subliminal things in here and I don't know if it means anything to you or not but uh, I do have Santa up here what do you think about Santa? <laughs> wait are there any kids in the room? <laughs> <laughs> okay okay not any okay. I'm not trying to out Santa <laughs> to any of you I apologize <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's okay I already had it ruined by VeggieTales <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> Okay, so everybody likes Santa. Good. Uh, I wanted to start with a survey. <laughs> I wanted to start with a survey because it's important that you understand who you are and who people think you are and what you hold dear, what values you have. And it's important that you understand these things and what other people think about you and those sorts of things. So if you feel like you'd like to, you can answer some of these questions. Let's start with the first one. What do you do for a living? Just anybody, one word. Work. Right, what? Work. Work, work. Oh man. It's a man that loves his job. <laughs> you work for a living, okay. Are you, you're married. Yes. Do you have kids? This is becoming more, of course you have kids, right? Who are your parents? Never knew how troubling the question could be. <laughs> I think I asked my wife that one day. <laughs> okay. And I had to consider it myself. Who are your parents? And that's all I'm going to say because I am recording this. All right, where are you from? Okay, Houston, the south? The west. The west. All right. Okay. Uh, uh, were you rich? Were you poor? Were you neither because you were actually a child and didn't have an opportunity yet, but your parents were one or the other, right? Okay. Now how about now? How much do you make? Anybody? <laughs> no takers on that. Who, which neighborhood do you live in? Anyone? Uh, Longwood? Oh, you live right over there? Millridge Forest. Awesome. Where else? Riata Ranch. We looked at a house there. I love how they had the trees in between the street and the sidewalk. I like that. Jack, where do you live? Tops. Tops? Tower, Tower, Tower Oaks Plaza. Across the street. Plaza. Sounds like a movie theater. <laughs> <laughs> Great neighborhood. Huge lots. Anybody else? Meisterwood. Meisterwood. Reminds me of that Saturday Night Live guy. Right, fine. Uh, Meister means master. Mas Masterwood. 
All right, anybody live in Longwood? No? All right, Lakewood? Everything's wood. All right, ah, here's a good one. Where did you go to college? I heard a whoop that's got to be A&M. What was this? That's A&M. <laughs> Stephen at Boston State University. <laughs> SFA. Uh, Lumberjacks? Axum, yes. Axum Lumberjacks. Yeah. Oh, dear. I didn't put them up here. <laughs> I ran out of space, though. Okay. Oh, here's a good one. Did you go to college? I hope that you did. If you didn't, you're just doomed, right? <laughs> Did you go to college? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> you forgot your recording. Clearly, as you can see, my tax example. That's right. Yeah, they never do anything that we did. Uh, where are you sending your kids to school? Where are you sending them to school now? Anywhere but Texas. Anywhere. Okay, that really thought <laughs> is... So where are you sending them to Preschool. Oh, yeah. What, what preschool? Whoa, what? What? Saint, say it again. Saint Cuthbert. Saint Cuthbert. <laughs> <laughs> you just said to an affordable one. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't sound affordable. <laughs> oh, here's an important one. Are you working your way up the corporate ladder? <laughs> That's very profound. <laughs> I think my company treats on a different ladder. <laughs> 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 so, so, it an escalator? Some corporate ladders are taller than others. The escalator went to nowhere? Yeah, it's a down escalator and you're going up. Are you going to go down the chute? Down ladders. Chutes and ladders. Which job do you have, the chute or the ladder? Are you living the American dream? Very important. Are you living the American dream? From where I'm standing, looks like we're all American, we're all American <laughs> but we're all awake. That's weird. Uh, which party are you affiliated with? Which political party are you affiliated with? That's very, that's the most important thing about an American. How many of you are Democrats? Oh, we don't want to say in church. How many of you are Republicans? How many of you are independent? Oh, come on. Libertarians? <laughs> many, uh, libertarians, yeah, libertarians. How many are anarchists? How many of you are anarchists? <laughs> How many of you are in the Labour Party? We don't have that yet. Oh, that's right. Ah, oh, sorry. <laughs> British humor, not funny for infants. <laughs> Okay, uh, are you conservative or liberal? You could be a conservative Democrat and a liberal Republican. Are you conservative or liberal? Okay, that's important. Do you support the troops? Yes. Okay. I support you, sir. Ah, do you listen to NPR Rush Hannity? I got a picture of Hannity. You mean Limbo or the prog rock band? Oh, both. Either. I, I listen to uh, the Canadian band. I, I do like Rush. Rush is right. Haven't been listening to them lately. But. NPR? Anybody listen to NPR? And are you watching Fox News or CNN? Yes. Daily Show? Come on. Okay, the, the Daily Show. <laughs> Uh, who do people think you are? All right, this this is who do you think you are? All right, who do people think you are? Who's that in the middle? Speaking of Canadians, deadly do right. Deadly do right. Oh, who is the British? British show. <laughs> Mothers of infants. I said labor. Oh, I said labor, and you already had the labor. <laughs> I, who, do, who do people think you are? It's important you know who people think you are. I mean, you know, they look at you and they say, oh, he's, he or she has the right job, the right kind of house. Did you see that house back here? Whose house is that? Is that what? Is that the one you built? No. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> it's just some random house. I, I, I looked up. Okay. Uh, 
Google Images made sure the safe search was on. You gotta always make sure the safe <laughs> search is on because you could look up anything. Even Dudley do right. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's just a, a nice house in Cyprus. That's what I typed in, nice house in Cyprus, Texas. <laughs> and this popped up, so. Uh, oh, it's Town Lake. Oh, where do you live? Town Lake? <laughs> yeah, do you have the right kind of house? Don't you love it when you go to your friend's house and it's just huge and it's awesome, right? And you think, man, they got it together. And the right kind of car. Oh, what kind of car are you drive? Toyota Camry. A paid off one. <laughs> yeah, it's a paid off one. Oh, yes. <laughs> That's a That's good the one. That's best guy. <laughs> if you got the right job, though, the right house, the right car, the right kind of kids, ooh, the right kind of financial portfolio, how is your portfolio doing right now? Should be doing I'd rather it. not talk about it. <laughs> oh, dear. I thought uh, stocks were up. Storks are up. Stores are up, stocks are down. Stocks <laughs> Ah, and the right kind of life. I, I, I wanted a, a picture of the good life, and I think this is actually from a movie that I've never seen. American <laughs> Psycho. <laughs> I love this book. Did you see this? How to be richer, smarter, and better looking than your parent. <laughs> Is that in the fiction or nonfiction? I, the last I don't know. know. <laughs> but it's by Zach Bissonette. The street. Yeah. Yeah. Golly. He's, okay. got, so he's got two S's, two N's, and two T's. No K. No K? Zach. Oh, Zach. Oh, golly. He's overly hip. He looks like he got Rob Lowe for the, the picture. Hey, uh, are any stay, stay at home moms here today? Yep. Right? <laughs> That's now. I work from home, and I see Marianne. This is her all week. Okay, and then where do you rank on a scale from great to sucks? <laughs> I mean, this is important. I, I actually did want to do like a, have you all fill it out, but then I did great to sucks, and I did ten to zeros. So I don't know. But you could rate yourself on this, right? Okay. Restaurants? Like oh, yeah, yeah, the type of restaurants you go to. I mean, oh. McDonald's is a type. Ed, Eddie V's is another type. <laughs> Eddie V's? Oh, Eddie V's. Eddie, oh. <laughs> Eddie Van Halen or Eddie Vedder? <laughs> it's neither? There's a third Eddie V. <laughs> He's so hip, his last name is V. 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 What does it stand for? V. Yeah. Oh, yeah, your social circle is important. Well, oh, is this your social circle? Yeah. So is this social so circle great or does it suck? Do you get spit up on? Yeah, sometimes your social circle vomits on you. Uh, here's... Good questions about what you value. Patriotism. Do you put your hand over your heart when the national anthem is being sung, when you're watching sports, when you're there? Do you sing the national anthem? I mean, when they're singing it the normal way. Because some of them, you, do you sing Texas Art? Do you know Texas Art? <laughs> Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> All hail the mighty state. So wonderful, so great. Boldest and grandest. Withstanding every test. Oh, empire. Oh, empire? Really? <laughs> Patriotism's important. Do you sing, when you sing the national anthem, do you close your eyes? Do you raise your hands when you sing my country, tis of thee? Is it a form of worship for you anyway? <laughs> or is it, do you, are you the other side that says, ah, spit on the flag and kill it? Um, depends on how much you value it. What about your family? Value family. Family is very important. Brother, sister, mother, wife, children, husband. I'm not trying to be sexist. Who the company? Ooh, how much do you value the the company. <laughs> what, CIA? <laughs> uh, you want to have the CIA here? 
company can really get your time, right? <laughs> okay. How much do you value your political views? Are you fighting for your views? It is important because this country is going down the tubes and you have to fight for your political views. It's important. And hate the other side. <laughs> but yours is right, so don't worry about it. What about environmental issues? The settled science of environmental issues. Are you fighting for that? I think that battle was lost when God made the earth. <laughs> I'm the only one laughing. <laughs> you must have been right. You're very profound. I think it was British humor. <laughs> <laughs> yep, no kids left. <laughs> what about Texas? How much do you value... I, I can feel it. Whew. How much do you value Texas? That's a question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not talking about any university here. I'm talking about the state. And how much you talk about the university? No. Right? <laughs> we love Texas, and if you ask anybody that's from another state, they were like, "You guys are really proud of your state," and we're like, "Duh." Yeah. I saw an article this week. A guy from California, a music writer, says, "When I come to Texas, I always feel like I'm visiting another country that just happens to use U.S. currency." <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <clears throat> How much do you value the American dream? Is it important? I mean, this is kind of a blanket statement, really. All right, whatever. Uh, and who are you becoming? Because you are becoming something. I mean, you, what you value, uh, where you rank, what people think about you, and who you think you are, it's all forming your, your becoming something and becoming more. When I mean, you became one, then you became more, and now you're becoming something else. What kind of folk are you becoming? Folk. Uh, corporate ladder climber folk. Good retirement plan folk. Financial independence folk. Those are fun folk. They do what they want, right? Debt free folk. Political activist folk. Environmental activist folk. <laughs> Empty nesters that can no longer relate to one another folk. <laughs> <laughs> Them <laughs> becoming. <laughs> oh, that is scary. Uh, oh, are you like the following people on the following slide? The following people. <laughs> Maybe the following people are the leading people. Ooh. See anybody you recognize? I love this reality. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I have no idea what happened down here or over here. Bad, bad plastic surgery. She, yeah. This one? The face of what happens when you get, she wanted to look like a cat and it's, she was more. It was all meow, meow hill from there. Downhill. Meow hill. What a shame, huh? Good actor. I like. All right. Uh, How did you get to the point that you're in? I do have a disclaimer, and I am going to read it in full, um, and I mean it when I wrote, you are likely to be offended at and disagree with some of the following points. Many of the activities being discussed are perfectly benign and normal. What does benign mean? Not cancerous. <laughs> right. Not malignant, right. They're benign and normal. They're harmless. And, although they can make you feel uncomfortable. And they are not meant to be conveyed as negative activities to avoid. And I'm very general about what that applies to, because some of them are malignant. Uh, the following is meant to provoke deep thinking and re-evaluation of your current strongly held beliefs about the subjects that shall be discussed. And the subjects, maybe, that applies to you. So please proceed at your own discretion. And that's my disclaimer. <laughs> We've lost four already. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, I love this picture. Did it ever occur to you that you might be living in the Matrix? Did anybody see the Matrix? Because this... (laughs) (laughs) What's the Matrix? What happened? Anybody? (laughs) I'm not singling anyone out. A short synopsis. More robots enslave humans turn them into biological... Okay, yeah. Ted had to save everybody. 
Ted? <laughs> oh, golly. <laughs> <laughs> Wild stallions, you two. <laughs> Um, so, but they're living, are they living in reality when they're in the matrix? No. No. How did Morpheus describe it? Does the world pulled over your eyes, right? And converts you into a copper top battery. Um... Did you ever get the feeling that you've been living into someone else's or someone's lies? What if you were? It'd be intense. But let's take a look at the devil. Uh, Genesis 3 1, if you would turn in your Bibles, or if you would get out your smartphones and turn to your Bibles. So Genesis. Uh, chapter 3, verse 1. We will find in, in chapter 3, is, you know, everything's great in chapter 1 and 2. And we're going to find in chapter 3, we get introduced to the serpent who is the devil. Not to be confused with a, uh, every snake you see is not the devil. Ask Carissa. Tell you. <laughs> Unless it bites you, uh, then you can scream at it, it like it's the devil. If it's visible, yes. If it's within life sight, it is the devil. The devil. Same as spiders. Yeah. Just, just all the same, just to make sure. Yeah, okay. When you see a snake, kill it. All right. Uh, this is a little game of fill in the blank. Uh, but the serpent being spoken of here, and we're going to see by the time we get to Revelation 20. We're going to see that this is indeed the devil, so that make no mistake about it. Now the serpent was more crafty than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Indeed, has God said, You shall not eat from any tree of the garden? What? Did I use the voice? My wife is here to keep me from using whatever the voice is. Okay, good. Jeremy, you should record yourself reading yeah. the Bible and sell it to people. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Yeah. Turn to profit. Makes it much more entertaining. The lies of the devil can be quite crafty. Crafty. Yeah. Crafty. Subtle. How many of you have subtle in your version? Subtle. I like subtle. Because what he says is very subtle. He says. You shall not eat from any of the tree of the garden. He knows very well what God said. But he's just putting a little spin on it. He, instead of focusing on all the trees they can eat, he says, he brings in a question, you can't eat from any of the trees in the garden. Right? It's subtle. It's like this perfectly simple, it's, it's a tweet. Because you got to think about if you're going to tweet on Twitter. And I'm not a Twitterer. But if you're going to tweet on Twitter, you really got to condense the point you're trying to make. I haven't learned that art yet. But yeah, he can be subtle. It's a subtle thing. It's a subtle movement. And if you are going to sail from, let's say, England to uh, New York City, right? And you make a subtle shift in your angle south... Are you going to wind up in New York, in the harbor, if you make a subtle shift? Like if you're trying to get from the dot to the line, dash, how about that? From the period to the dash, and you're going along, but there's a subtle shift in this direction. I mean, I'm not going to get there, am I? I'm going to miss the mark. So I'm going to, actually, I'm going to wind up right here in the devil's. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so the devil is subtle. He's crafty. He's sneaky, okay? What about John 8, 24 through 47? This is Jesus talking, uh, Jesus who knows the devil very well. But John chapter 8, Gospel of John, verses 42 through 47. Jesus said to them, 
If God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and have come from God. For I have not even come on my own initiative, but he sent me. Why do you not understand what I am saying? It is because you cannot hear my word. You are of your father the devil, and you want to do the desires of your father. He was a murderer from the beginning, and does not stand in the truth, because there is no truth in him. Whenever he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own nature, for he is a liar and the father of lies. I'll stop there. Uh, the devil's native language is lies. He's crafty, he's subtle, he's lying to who? I don't know. Let's find out. Uh, Revelation 20, 1 through 3. I do know. I lie. Boy. Shoot. <laughs> Revelation 20. We'll find out in Revelation 20. Okay. Revelation, the great book about the end times. Are we living in the end times right now? I submit to you that we definitely are. And as it says in 2 Peter chapter 3, a day to the Lord is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is as a day. We're living in the last times, and it could be a thousand years from now that it finally ends. But at any rate, Revelation 20, verses 1 through 3, because no man knows the day. Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, holding the key of the abyss and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold of the dragon, the serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. And he threw him into the abyss and shut it and sealed it over him so that he would no longer deceive the nations until the thousand years were completed. After these things, he must be released for a short time. I don't know why. But who is he deceiving? So that he can no longer deceive the nations. He's crafty. He's subtle. He's a liar and he's lying to the nations. And in 2 Corinthians 11, 14 through 15, we find that he masquerades as an angel of light. Let's read it for ourselves. 2 Corinthians 11, Oh, I flipped right to it. 14 through 15. And you could go back and, and study every single one of these passages to make sure that it's in the proper context. But 11, uh, 14 through 15 says, No wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. Therefore, it is not surprising if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness, whose end will be according to their deeds. Well, he's a liar. Of course he's going to masquerade as an angel of light. He's deceiving the nations. He's subtle. His lies are subtle. And a fish barely sees the hook, if at all. And they bite down hard enough to be caught in the hook. Is there a correlation between this and what we've been talking about before all this? I bet there is, um, <clears throat> in some ways. Here's a good book, Spirit of the Rainforest. It's about a tribe in the Amazon. It's a real book written by a shaman who converted to Christianity. It's about the Yanomamo Indians, and the way that their life works is... Their tribe is here, there's a, another group over here, and a group over here, and they're worshiping demons. And the demons are taking credit for everything. And the same demon's talking to this guy that's talking to that guy, and getting them to attack each other and kill each other. And it helped me understand, so that my friends, the Prezes, who are over in Indonesia, they're dealing with the same people, even though these people are in the Amazon, and they're being lied to, and they're giving the demons credit for everything, good or bad, and now oh, we have to go attack them because they attacked us, and they're killing each other. And I thought, good, that helps me understand that that is the plan for these type of Stone Age type people. Stone Age, would that be fine to say? Because they are naked, kind of, and <laughs> they don't want to be. 
That was kind of cool. We got a lot of commentary. They said, you think we want to be here naked in the forest? We're not doing this because we love nature. We're getting eaten up by insects. <laughs> but it helped me understand that that was the plan for those kind of people. Surely not the plan for us. How are things in Russia? Are we happy with them? No. No? Okay. How was that World War II thing? Did a lot of people die? Did, did my grandfathers almost die in that? Definitely. Yeah. Don't be too blue about that. Don't be too what? Please don't be too blue about that. My father's father was on a boat. He was ready. He was very ready. They told him, you're going to die. Because it's Japan. He was in the Pacific. 28 months in the jungles. 28 months. Some of our grandparents were in the camps. Yeah, I believe it. I'm not saying they died for nothing. Don't hear me incorrectly. I'm saying the same garbage that's happening with these people is happening to us. And the Japanese needed to be stopped. And the Germans needed to be stopped. And my grandfather didn't believe the lie that there was a bomb that was going to stop the war. He laughed at it. My dad wasn't even born yet. Nuclear bomb saved my life. That's jacked up. But that's not the point. The point is, I had to reflect on it and say, dang it, that's happening to us. And then what are we supposed to do about it? Sit back and do nothing? Man, it was so much funnier like 20 minutes ago. All right, let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 11. We're still there. Verses 2 through 3. For I am jealous for you with a godly jealousy. For I betrothed you to one husband, so that to Christ I might present you as a pure virgin. But I am afraid that as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, your minds will be led astray from the simplicity and purity of devotion to Christ. Does this happen to us? Like the picture? It's easy for us to get distracted, right? And to fall for the thing that isn't the thing. And when I say us, I mean us. Right, Jack? Definitely. All of us. And like my disclaimer said, <laughs> they're not all malignant things. Some are benign, and some of them are unfortunately expedient. That is to say, what the heck are we going to do about the Nazis? And what are we going to do if the Russians suddenly turn into the Nazis and start saying, we like Ukraine, and we like Eastern Europe again? And we got the terrorists. Oh, so much to worry about. So many things to keep our minds occupied with. Right? All right, the American dream. <clears throat> the American dream. Uh, first, the child is born, and we'll be looking at the slides a lot here. The distractions quickly appear and are usually born out of the conflict of personal time versus a baby's overly needy ways or the lie that the child needs to get acclimated to technology. I loved my private personal time, and then I got married. And then I couldn't stay up till 2 in the morning. I can't believe I used to do that. 2 and 3 in the morning. Oh, man. I had to go to bed with my wife. 10, 10, 10 30? Are you kidding me? That's terrible. Not to mention, you know, well, I'm going to go out with the guys again. Again? Yeah, again. That's what I used to always do. That's what you used to do. You're married now. And then, well, you get, you start to change, you know, I, I start to realize I'm either going to be, I have to make a change. Next week. 
You didn't raise your hand, though, to say that I was doing it. Uh, you, you have to make some changes, some concessions, and when the child comes, man, I don't have to tell you all, you all know what happens. It is tough, right? Uh, but, and this is, says usually, I'm not saying you all, and I'm not saying that any of this is bad, okay? I'm just saying this is usually what happens, right? Um, and always remember that it is not your business to train your child in the way they should go. Let your child find their own way, right? Because no one else is going to try to train them. Let your child find their own way. All right. What's that a picture of? A wedge, right? Okay, we'll get back to that in a second. All right, by the age of five, a child will spend most of their awake time at school. It's a 35-hour work week, okay? You wake up, you get ready. Well, you, the child wakes up in the morning, right? You've got to make breakfast, and you've got to hurry up because now there's a, a drop-dead deadline every stinking day, and you've got to get your child there, okay? So if you don't get them there on time, you get in trouble. It makes you look bad, too. We know it's not your fault, honey. It's your parents. <laughs> but then they come home. They settle down. They've got to unwind a little bit. They come home uh, around 4 o'clock if you go to Pope Elementary School. Um, they got to settle down, eat around 5, play a little bit, go to bed at 7, at least in our household. But they're getting prepared for the grind. My daughter actually said to me, after the end of the first week, she said, Daddy, and she was crying, I don't like the work week. <laughs> Little five-year-old girl. She was five, but she's six now. Little five-year-old girl. I don't like the work week, she said. Yeah, but she was getting ready for the grind. Okay. All right, the wedge. <clears throat> how, how does a wedge work? And not the kind that seniors give to freshmen. <laughs> That's a different kind. It's an inclined plane that distributes force in a different direction. Are you an engineer or? <laughs> <laughs> he was dead on. A balancing tool? Yeah. Because if you don't, like when you're doing a door or a window, you have it in there, it could be off. Ah, okay, so you wedge it in there. That's dry. It's kind of that wedge, that piece of wood. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Now here uh, we saw this sort of action. Because an axe is a wedge, right? It's got that classic wedge V shape, like Eddie V, his last name. The V shape, which splits things apart, right? And so a wedge begins to form between a child and the parents with the increased time in outside activities. Uh, and we, we saw it. Our child was crying. First day of school, oh, we were out there with a bunch of them. And we're like, be strong, kid. <laughs> and, and we're hugging her and kissing her goodbye, and we're walking home, and we're quiet for the first few minutes. Yeah, I'm fine. Darn pollen, you know, that sort of thing. But uh, then we actually had to get on to Jasmine, our daughter, because she was crying two weeks into it. And finally, I had to tell her, because it was getting, it was like, come on. And the teachers were like, come on, honey, come on. Come on, kid. <laughs> you know? uh, if you ever see the Christmas story, where they're, they're going up to see Santa, and they're come on, kid. <laughs> it was that kind of thing. But we, we had to get on to her and say, you go into that school right now. And I was getting frustrated. Mary Ann was getting frustrated. And she went into that school. And then, then she got braver. She said, I can do it now, Daddy. I can do it. Um, and then she started to really like her teacher, and we really like her teacher, too, very much. The teacher was awesome. Uh, but we, we noticed this had started to happen. And this is normal, right, Jack? I'm not sure what point you're making. <laughs> <laughs> A child has got to learn one day, you know, you... you push the bird out and it's got to fly, right? Okay. And so it starts, it starts here. There's got to be, I mean, there's a, a point where you stop breastfeeding. There's a point where they stop eating uh, liquids and, and they start eating, or they eat liquids with solids as well. 
it's it's still this this process of independence, if you will. Okay. So, but this wedge happens, and it really started to happen then, because then Jasmine was free to start to attach to her teacher and her students like siblings. Teacher was like the parents, and the students were like siblings. Uh, other students could be vicious bullies. We didn't see any of those yet. I did. Anybody see a bully growing up? Were any of you bullies? <laughs> Bullying's bad. Okay. And then new worldviews are imposed on the child. Uh, one of my daughter's students, fellow students, um, had two mommies. Huh? Yeah, John's, John Mann's. One of his, one of his classmates, I had two mommies or two daddies. Huh. Sam was telling me about it. Mm -hmm. You know, he had, to, he had to deal with that little five-year-old boy. It's important for him to know about that. That's important. Um, and, of course, they had a, a gay awareness thing at uh, Hamilton Junior High that my nephew wound up not going to. And he was looked at as a mutant for not going to it. Anyway, they have all these different worldviews that are started to impose upon their child from many different sources simultaneously. And, of course, this is going to continue throughout their life. Some are subtle. Some are overt, right? But it's, it's shaping the child, and this is just any child, really. And then there are also outside activities that you have to get your kids into in order to keep up with the Joneses or the Smithses, like dance, gymnastics, Little League, karate, karaoke. Anybody have their kids in karaoke? It sounded like it should be. Like We could start. <laughs> they do it on their own? At home. Oh, yeah. Little stand-up stand comedian <laughs> school. <laughs> then there's the MSEC, the Mandatory Socialization Event Camp. Is that for the kids or the pets? <laughs> <laughs> the I don't together. know. Either way, it sounds rough. <laughs> um... <laughs> Meanwhile, the parents are in the grind, all right? The parents are in the grind. They're tired when they come home. Uh, and, and they have to watch, or they're tired after watching a toddler all day. And then it's vegetable time versus kid time. Ooh. Man, that's tough. I mean, you're tired. All you can think of. <laughs> I mean, I want that camera out of my house. <laughs> I don't know. I think I could hang out with this guy for a bit. <laughs> that is a big mug. <laughs> he has a lot of hair on his head. Who's looking at his head? Look at this. <laughs> All right. Ah, my disclaimer is in full effect. All right. Elementary school has a diagnosis. Your uh, the child has either ADD or ADHD. And it's medication time. This is a reality for some. They can't be escaped without medication. However, in my generation, which I'm thinking, you know, Jack always say, you always feel like you're the young guy. And <laughs> I don't know if, if my generation is your generation or, or maybe, which is it? You're older than them. <laughs> I'm 37. I'm not old. <laughs> All right. Uh, I was joking around with my high school students one day because one of them was flipping out. I said, dude, take a pill. And I'm laughing. <laughs> I was the only one laughing. <laughs> I had no idea. I'm just joking around. And, and Mr. Little, do I really need to go take a pill? It's a, it's a joke, man. <laughs> no, Mr. Little. And then the other students are helping. He can go down to the front desk and take a pill. <laughs> Oh, you gotta watch what you say. There was that time that, oh, you know what? This is being recorded. Uh, <laughs> so I went down to the front office in my break. And, well, no, then I asked them. I said, um, I didn't know you were on medication. I'm sorry. Are there reviews on? Uh, then I asked. Stupid. He's a guy. And all the, every, all the hands went up. Just about every single hand went up. And then I was shocked. And then I went down to the front in my, my uh, class session off, and I saw a pharmacy that I'd never seen before, but it was in the back room. 
And I said, how many of our students are on these kind of drugs? Well, most of them. That's why we've got to keep this locked and we've got it all cataloged and, and all this stuff. If you notice anything, you know, you can call us and ask and we'll, we'll let you know if the child should have a pill. Which, um, shoot, what are you going to do? Somebody very near and dear to me needed a pill badly. And wouldn't take it. And is no longer with us. Anyway. Um, so your head can be just as broken as your arm, people. But all of them? Really? Uh, so, oh yeah, I spent like three days then in every single... I had freshmen and sophomore. I spent three days with them and we talked about this issue. And, and they helped me to understand what, what the deal was of uh, why they had come to be the way that they were. And, and we all decided on, on some of the things that really impacted them, right? Um, I love this one. <laughs> That's a trap! <laughs> uh, and it's, it's, it's because of the fast-paced nature of... This is fun. There's medication for that. <laughs> All right. By middle school, if not before, the child is ready to dabble in adulthood. Drugs, sex, porn, alcohol. Oh, the porn part is so difficult because when I was a kid, it was not readily available at the click of a mouse. I mean, a mouse was a different thing back in those days. It was a mouse. Um, all right. So the, the wedge is gaining ground. Yeah, that, that could have been worded better. Oh, yeah, and, and the parents are no longer fun to have around, and the feeling is mutual. <laughs> All right, and this isn't saying it's your life or what your life is going to be. It's just, it's a possibility. And by high school, oh, the, oh golly, the child looks like an adult. That's not a joke. They look like adults. I had no idea. I, I'm terrible already at trying to distinguish how old somebody is. So, Jack, you do look like one of the young guys. <laughs> I color my hair. <laughs> ah, it's pretty. <laughs> uh, they look older than they are. And I had to realize that. Um, yeah. But their hormones are raging, and their mind is full of intelligent facts. I mean, we teach them a boatload of stuff that... People in other generations, I mean, probably well-educated people. It took them years to figure out. And in some cases, the knowledge wasn't even there. And now the kids have it. And so it's a lie because it makes them look, it makes them feel like they're more intelligent. Because you always look back when you're in the 11th grade and you say, those dumb freshmen. <laughs> they're kids. They don't know anything. And, and you're a senior. Then you know everything. And my parents always told me, wait till you go to college. Those people are going to look at you like you're a kid, and it sounded ridiculous. And then I was in college for many years in college. <laughs> many, many. So they probably were kids. I was 29 years old in a college class, and they were kids. My goodness. Uh, but it's, it's a lie. It is a lie. You're, just because you have intelligent facts in your brain does not mean that you are mature, emotionally mature. So what happens is we have this difference where the physical maturity in America, not in other countries, mind you, but in countries like ours, the physical maturity outpaces the emotional maturity. Okay? Uh, but the system that we have keeps them young mentally or, or emotionally. And now a little TV. Nothing. Okay. Uh, anybody watch any of these? Just Glee. Just Glee. <laughs> All right, we got One Tree Hill, Dawson's Creek, OC, 90210, Friday Night Lights, uh, Little Liars, I think. Pretty Little Liars. Um, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Uh, so they go from cartoons to teen dramas, and the format is yada yada guy, yada yada gal, yada yada sex with everyone, yada yada teachers and students, yada yada gay couple, uh, yada yada drugs and alcohol, rehab, yada yada my parents don't understand, no one understands 
Only you, only the wisdom of a 15-year-old can save me. Uh, yada, yada, teenage suicide, don't do it. And then the, the kids say, I think I'll try that. And, I mean, it's true. Search your feelings, Luke. Uh, <laughs> they want to be what they watch. They try what they watch, okay? Ooh, and then the reality, whew. I remember my wife doing the same thing, tears of joy. Right? Are these tears of joy? Or is it horror? Oh dear. Oh dear. All right, uh, don't forget, your child should never be denied the right to experience everything that you experienced, right? You don't want them to grow up and not experience the things that you experienced. I didn't put that on there. Uh, I'm not sure. I think that's a chemistry class. Um, <laughs> I believe in vampires now, man. <laughs> Pass the Doritos. Okay, high school. So they see the light at the end of the tunnel, and they better have good grades, right? Because good grades gets you into a good college, and the good college gets you a good job, right? Good job is important. Uh, oh, and then they go to college, and they learn about teamwork. <laughs> I typed in kickstand, I thought. It was keg stand. All right, I typed in. I did type in keg stand. It was safe search. Okay, college, they look very mature, and they're ready to be programmed even further because now they're away from home. Physically, they look a lot more mature than they are emotionally, so they are open to whatever the professors, whatever the college, whatever the other students who are coming from all these diverse backgrounds have to program into them. The wedge has done its work. Uh, anyway. And then there's the American dream. They make it through college, which is good. They, they figured out that, you know, probably by their junior year, <laughs> they figured out that they better get good grades so that they can deal with the reality of, eh, it doesn't care what my philosophy is, I gotta get a good job. <laughs> so then they, they get into corporate America, and corporate America subtly saps uh, I meant to say their time, your time, fine, your, that's true. Your time as you climb the corporate ladder through a countless series of compromises and concessions. And you gotta figure out which one you are. Are you a yes man or a yes woman? You can't be both. <laughs> Without surgery. Uh, anyway, you make decent money and have insurance, and if you don't spend money on insurance, you will surely die, just so you know. If you don't spend money on insurance, you will die. If you spend money on insurance, you're going to die, too. All right. These guys were jumping the other... Ah, marriage. This is another... I'm putting pressure points on you. Okay? After many different sexual partners over the years, they, the child or whoever, marry someone that they fell in love with while they were a little older and wiser. Their emotional age caught up with their bodies, hopefully. And the white stands for after many different sexual partners. Oh, isn't that great? Because after watching all those shows about all the fun you can have, and you've tried it and you've done it, isn't that a wonderful conversation to have to have? You asked me to teach. <laughs> You're doing great, but you are running out of time. I know. We have a cue in this class. A cue? Yeah, when the, when the final song starts. Oh, I know. I'm on the other side. <laughs> All right. Uh, so now they can start living and accumulating massive amounts of debt, accumulating stuff, and stuff equals happiness. It has been proven in math, mathematically, that stuff, you know, okay, maybe not. I love this picture. I accidentally found it. Isn't it great? <laughs> okay. Uh, and now that the child has grown up and married, they can put their kids into the system as well, which is fun. It's fun to be in the system. What? Yeah, I know. Nobody wants to see sausage being made. But this is the nicest step. <laughs> and now there's retirement. <laughs> Okay, 
Um, can you get out of the system? Is there another way? I can't, sorry. Can you get out? <laughs> I'm not trying to say that you are in the system. I am trying to say that we have been sold a bill of goods and it's bad. The goods are bad. The goods are bad. Bad goods. Those are oxymoron. <laughs> we have, and when you live into it, there's so much regret. So many things that look fun and just aren't. I loved your answer. What do you do for a living? Work. On the, didn't hesitate. On the forefront of your mind, work. Well, Jack. Is that it? <laughs> no, not really, but it's close enough. Um, next week, you will learn about how to live awesome. in your life in Christ. A solution. Us. Huh? I said after you've depressed us fully. <laughs> yada, yada. <laughs> So, it's not that bad. <laughs> it's great. That's life outside of Christ. Okay, and it's a harsh reality. There is a life inside of Christ. And all the stuff that uh, Pastor Buchanan talked about today is relevant. And it is the escape. It is the, yes, I go to work, but yes, I'm happy. And yes, I have joy because my hope is not in those things. My hope is in Christ alone. And when your hope is in Christ you see all of this stuff, and dang it, you still partake in some of it. Because who said it? Sherlock is a really good show. <laughs> all right, And you still are going to partake in these things. And sending your kids to school is fine. Being mindful of the wedge is important. It must be addressed. All of these things must be addressed, but they can only be addressed if your life in Christ is the priority. But we'll find out about that next week. Let's pray. Lord, I'm sorry if I crossed any lines today and certainly didn't intend to offend anybody. Lord, I, I want to stimulate uh, them and myself to the truth and not to believe the lies that we've been sold, but to embrace what it is that you have for us.